Nuke is the industry standard software for compositing, but did you know there's a free and open source alternative that mirrors its interface and features basically one-to-one? -one? It's called Natron, and in this video I'll show you everything you need to know to use it on your next project by step-by-step -step taking you through the comp of this example scene. The first step is to adjust the render settings to give you the most flexibility once we are in Natron. So enable the object and material crypto mats as well as the mist pass. Then so that this extra info actually gets saved, switch the output file type to OpenEXR multi-layer. Just as a quick warning here, these files get big. Then in Natron, to navigate, you can scroll up and down to zoom, press the middle mouse button to move side to side, and press space over any of the areas to maximize them. Now to read in the rendered images, you'll want to press tab and search for read. By the way, this is the way you add nodes in Natron. Then hit enter, and in the window that pops up, you can either select sequence if you want to add in an image sequence, or file if you just have a still image. Then if we view the read node by selecting it and pressing 1, we can see that the colors are pretty messed up. So to fix that, add an OCIO look transform node and paste the path to your Blender's config.ocio file in this text field here. The different paths for Windows, Mac and Linux will be on screen. Once you've done that, select the same look as you did in Blender and switch both the input and output color spaces to linear. Then next, add an OCIO color space node. Again, paste Blender's config.ocio in the text field and switch the output color space to AGX AGX base sRGB. The colors still won't look correct, but that's because we are converting the image to sRGB twice. So to fix that, go to this drop down here where it says sRGB and switch it to linear. And boom, perfect colors. If you left your exposure in Blender at zero. If not, then you'll want to add a multiply node in front of the OCIO look transform and tweak the multiplication factor until the brightness matches. By the way, if you want to add a node between two other nodes, then slide it above the connection you want to drop it in while pressing control. All right, now we're done with the basics, so let's do some actual compositing. First, I want to soften the image a bit. So I'll add in a soften node, drop it in, and to tweak its settings, I'll double click it and they will appear in the side menu here. There, I'll just decrease the softness a bit. Also, just as a side note, all the compositing we do should be done before any of the OCIO color look transform stuff. Next, I want to add some dirty lens flares. So I'll read in a dirt texture and wait, wait, look at what it's called. It's called, check out the Patreon. On there, you can get access to all my video related project files, node groups, and some random 3D scans. So if that sounds interesting, check it out. Thanks a ton if you do. But all right, now the image is loaded in, but its aspect ratio is completely different from what we need. So what we can do to fix that is add a reformat node and switch its resize type to fill. And that fixed the aspect ratio. So now I want to constrain it to only appear in the bright parts of the image. To do that, I'll add in a glow node and check this glow only checkbox so that it will only show me the bright parts of the image. Then I'll multiply it with the dirt texture. But if you try to add a multiply node, you might notice that it only has one input and one output, but no way to multiply two nodes with each other. And that is because in Natron, the merge node is basically the single source of truth. So when I add two things together, merge node with the operation set to plus. When I subtract, merge node set to minus and so on. So to multiply the glow with the dirt, add a merge node, set it to multiply and plug the dirt into the A socket and the glow into the B socket. And there we have it. The next thing we have to do is to add it on top of the original image. Again, we need a merge node, but this time I'll set it to screen instead. If you want to tweak the visibility of the lens dirt effect, you can just tweak the mix factor in the merge nodes settings. Okay, next I want to add some glare. So again, I'll add a glow node, but this time I'll explain the settings a bit more thoroughly. So. If you want to decrease the strength of the glow, you can either decrease the gain or the isolate highlights. The latter is the minimum brightness something has to be to get included into the glow effect, while the former is just the overall brightness. Also, if you want to have those anamorphic streaks, then you can just increase the stretch setting. All right, next I'll add a vignette. And for this, I'll use a merge node again, but this time with the operation set to over. You might have noticed though that you can't specify a color for any of the sockets. So what you can do instead is to use a rectangle node, plug it into the socket you need the color in and specify it that way. Also for this vignette, we need to smoothly mask it to the edges of the image. So the way we can do that is to add a radial, that's just a shape included in Natron, reduce its softness and make it big. Then we can plug the mask input of the merge node into the radial and boom, a vignette. You can tweak the darkness by increasing the brightness of the second color in the radials settings. Then next, I want some ISO noise. And what's cool is that I actually have a note for that. It's called noise. But by default, the noise stays the same across the whole animation. But I want it to change on every frame. So what we can do in Natron is to right click on any property and set a keyframe. Then we change to a different frame, change the value, and that change will be auto keyframed. 
And that's the way I animated the seed of the noise. Only thing, by default, the interpolation is set to constant, so you'll have to set it to linear or ease as seen on screen. Then again, I merge it in and that's this image done for now. So to render it, add a write node, plug the output of the OCRO color space node into it, specify an output path, and if you want the file name to change with every frame, just include a hashtag in it. Then lastly, what's very important is to switch the file output color space to linear as well, so that the colors will stay correct. Then just click render or Sometimes this render button has the habit of disappearing. So if that happens, just select the right node, go up here to render and click render selected writers. Just as a last bonus tip, if you want to use crypto mats or any of these other nodes, then you'll want to install the Natron community plugins. To do that, go to this GitHub page, the link will be in the description and download the zip file. Then extract it and paste its contents into the PyPlugs folder of your Natron install. The paths for Windows, Mac and Linux will be on screen. Then after reopening Natron, add a crypto mat and a shuffle node, plug the shuffle A socket into the read node and the shuffle in socket into the shuffle node. Then in the shuffle nodes settings, switch the RGBA channels to the crypto object or crypto material RGBA channels respectively. Afterwards, you can just pick the objects you want to include in the crypto mat by clicking on any of the mat slots and control clicking on the object you want to include while, and this bit is important, viewing the output of the shuffle node. And voila, there they are masked out. But that's it. If this video helped at all, then please consider subscribing or check out this video next.